Well, it's good to have you back here with us this morning. And uh, we wanted to make a couple of announcements before we got into it much further. And uh, let me just uh, let me just share them. One is the is the idea of the uh, connection opportunities. Uh, people are coming up with different ideas about how to try and connect with other people even though they're not coming into physical contact with them. And uh, we want to try and encourage you to give us your ideas so we can pass them on to other people. One person I was talking with, talking with Paul and Fatima, I'll mention them uh, again in a short time, but they were talking about trying to put a banner up in their front window that had some sort of a spiritual application to be able to just uh, just encourage people as they're walking by on the street. One of the things that Helen and I are doing is that yesterday we were, I was up in the tree cutting our pussy willow tree, uh, cutting the branches off, and uh, Helen was cutting them down to a proper size, and we're planning on creating some little bundles of pussy willows, and then having a, a little a little saying or a little card that goes along with them uh, along the lines of uh, take, a, take a free bundle as a reminder that Alan and Helen and Central Baptist Church are praying for you, our neighbors. And uh, we want to get some ideas from you folks as to what other things we can be doing. And this is one of the ways the body of Christ works together is we all have ideas, so sharing them is helpful. Absolutely, absolutely. One of the things that uh, some people have emailed us about and we wanted to pass on as well is how you can perhaps continue to uh, give your act of worship or use your act of worship in giving uh, to the church financial. There's the al always the opportunity for you to be able to drop your offering at the church, but I'd encourage you to phone the church ahead of time. Make sure somebody's here. You could always drop your offering off if you'd like to. Well, if you go online to the church website, then you have the option also of uh, under the top part here, it says right at the top, it says giving. And you click on that and then it gives you the options of what you can be doing. Now, one of the options that we've had for a number of years is automatic withdrawals. Something that has been added on that you'll see on the website is being able to offer Canada or work through Canada Helps. And I, in fact, just did this this morning to be able to put our church offering in. And uh, you just go on to that, uh, you click on that button, and you will get automatically receded from Canada Helps, not from the church. So Canada Helps organizes that, and then they pass on to the church the donation you have just made. We would encourage you to do so, of course, is that you want to keep up for regular offerings because the Lord's work still continues to go on. Even through our missionaries around the world, they still need to be supported. And it's helpful because the people who come in and usually count this money, well, they might not want to be doing that as much because of the, the coronavirus. So giving electronically eliminates or uh, lessens that load for those people as yeah. well. The last thing is the e-transfers are being added to it probably at the beginning of this week where you would in Instead of going through Canada Helps or doing the automatic withdrawals or dropping your money off at the church, you'd be able to use an e-transfer. Uh, we just want to give you the opportunity to be able to give to the Lord's work. Thank you. You're yeah. welcome. And that, uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's helpful. And one of the things I wanted to do is uh, we've been going through Mark, and you may have listened to uh, the Sunday sermon which was on Mark, <clears throat> but one of the things that has been kind of frustrating, and I think it's a common frustration for for teachers is that as you teach, you can't teach everything you learn. And uh, we've been taking a fairly high level view of Mark, uh, touching on the major themes of are you in and are you out and the, the kingdom of God is coming and, and the king is coming and, and what does that mean in our lives. But as we go through those things and we discuss uh, in sermons and in, in different teaching t times uh, what that means and how it applies, uh, there are there are entire lessons that we, we have to set aside in order to get the bigger picture. So I just wanted to take a few minutes, and if you have your copy of, of the scripture, turn to, turn to Mark chapter 3, because this sermon, the last two sermons we've had have been in Mark 4. And in Mark 3, one of the themes that we picked up, or, or we, we touched on briefly, uh, is, is that of family. In Mark chapter 3, there is what <coughs> Pastor Jeremy called a, a Mark and Sandwich. And Mark does this. He'll, he'll take one topic and he'll start on it and then interrupt it with something else and then finish it. And there's, so there's like the two, he called it the two halves of the Oreo and the, and the white center. And uh, that happens in Mark chapter 3 um, for verses 20 down to the end of Mark chapter 3. And the first section in verses uh, 20 and 21, Mark's, uh, Mark tells us about Jesus' ministry and how it's getting very busy and he doesn't even have time to eat 
and you know, uh, well, that, that must be serious if he's not even eating. <laughs> and uh, then, then there's the interlude part in the middle where it's verses 20, 22 to 30, and what we learned is that Jesus is not stationary. He's, he's, uh, he's plundering Satan's house, and the way he's doing that is by forgiving sins and, uh, and capturing those, those of us who were in Satan's camp, who were sinners, who were lost, and forgiving our sins and bringing us into his family. And then in verses 31 to 35, his, his parents, his mother and his brothers come back. And it says in verse 31, And Jesus' mother and his brothers came, and standing outside, they sent to him and called him, and a crowd was sitting around him. And they said to him, Your mother and your brothers are outside seeking you. That's, that's a common thing to have happen, you know, there, before cell phones, someone knocked, hey, there's, there's someone outside who wants to, to talk to you. But Jesus' response in verse 33 uh, sounds a little hurtful, maybe to our ears. He says, who are my mother and my brothers? And then he looked around at the people who were sitting there. Those would have been the people who were following who wanted to hear him. And in verse 34 and 35, he says, here are my mother and my brothers. For whoever does the will of God, he is my brother and sister, and mother. Now, Pastor Alan and I were talking a little earlier about how the distancing effect of this, this virus really makes us feel, can make us feel alone or detached or, or without companionship. And that, that was something that happened before. We've talked about missionaries who live in difficult places, who, uh, who struggle, who, who don't have their friends and their family around, and they might, might even be in hostile circumstances. Well, this is, this is a way we can look at it now, where we're in a bit of a more hostile circumstance where we can't go out and do just what we would want to do. We can't go out and, and be physically near people. And Jesus is saying here, in this Mark and Sandwich, his physical family is, is not, a, not his real spiritual family. His spiritual family are the people who hear, the people who listen. And as we were talking about how different ways to serve and getting ideas from each other as, as, a, as a church family and how the body of Christ functions together, what we can recognize is that those who do the will of God, those who are part of the family, they are a real family. And that's what Jesus is getting at here. There's opposition, there's struggle, there's, there's limitations. But Jesus is making his own family. And if we're in, if we're part of the kingdom, if we become believers, especially our church family, we have family. We have com community together. One of the things that, that uh, just to, to piggyback on that is, uh, there have been a number of times when I visited in homes or visited in, in the hospital. And uh, think of one lady in particular where her family is out west. But it's an important thing for even the church visitors to be able to be there, just to, to let them know that they have a church family that cares about them and prays for them and loves them and, and that they can feel a part of that community. It may even be that uh, some of you who are watching this right now are at home on your own and you've been basically sequestered in your home and you're not getting out very much and there can be a sense of that loneliness. But to, to do this, to be, to be connecting with us the video, that's one of those ways that we can try and stay in contact. So it's, it's an important thing and even Jesus refers to this, the, the spiritual family that, that we have. We want you to certainly feel part of a spiritual family at Central Baptist Church. Mm -hmm. And now's a good time to Pick up the phone, look in your directory, and uh, give a call to another part of your, uh, your Christian family. Yeah, it's not just about receiving phone calls. It's about giving phone calls mm -hmm. as well. And one thing you can ask when you call people is, what can we pray for? Right. You could even pray over the phone. And we have a few things we, we'd like you to pray for, too. Yep. Uh, one of the, a couple of exciting things that are going on. Uh, Paul and Fatima that come to our church, and uh, those who, who are from our church would know who they are. Uh, one of the things that Fatima and Paul have tried to do is, is phone up different people. Uh, she tried to make, I think it was almost 100 phone calls, to try and, and get people to be praying each night at 7 o'clock. Since that point, uh, my, uh, my neighbor across the road, she contacts us, she goes to a different church, and she said, have you ever thought of having people pray at a certain time of the day? Some of the folks in our church are praying at 7 o'clock each night, and it seems like this is something that we may be able to get involved in, even though we might be on our own, 
We can be praying for, for different things uh, through this whole crisis that we're going through. And we can be doing that from our homes, but we can feel part of a, a larger family. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of the ladies, another lady that I talked to actually this morning, Colleen, she said, I think it was her niece that had come up with the saying, or she had read the saying about the COVID-19. Uh, she said the COVID, the, uh, the acrostic is Christ over virus and infectious diseases. Christ over virus and infectious diseases. So it's, it's something that we can be praying about, but what should we be praying about? One is the health care workers. We have a, a number of doctors within our congregation, three or four doctors within our congregation. Not only that, we have nurses, we have PSWs, we have people who are working as volunteers, frontline people who are coming into contact. Uh, one of our nurses in particular is working with the COVID uh, people or people who are suspected of having the COVID virus at our Brantford Hospital. And we need to be praying for them that they would stay healthy and the extra hours that they're working would not wear them down so much and their own immune system down so much that they would uh, be more susceptible to catching this virus. It can be a dark and draining time. It can be. Of... Uh, we need to be praying for the people who are, are hurting financially. Uh, we need to be praying for the people who are actually working extra hours that may be involved in the supply industry. And then the last thing about uh, for praying would be these Canadians that are trying to get back to Canada Let's be praying about those things as well as our own personal lives, our own families, praying that God would be able to use us to, to encourage other people. Because there's hope everywhere. There is. There is. Mm -hmm. I hope uh, the sermon was a blessing to you yesterday. Yep. And that we can continue to stay in contact this way. Send us an email, send a phone call or make a phone call and uh, we'd be glad to talk to you. Okay? God, God bless. bless. Did we just say God bless at the exact Both time? Both at the same time. It's That's like, amazing. It's like... <laughs>